Capital Secrets coming your way. What are they? Wait, intro first. What's up, WP Army? Hi, everyone. We better get to the point because we have a capital problem on our hands. Really? What is it? Literally, capitals. The topic of today's video. Got me worried for a bit. So, should we start? For sure. But firstly, let's point out to our first time viewers that capitals and cities mean the same thing in this video. Alright then, are you ready? Yes, let's begin with the basics. There are capitals that control different parts of the world map. Each capital has a predetermined territory that doesn't change. You capture capitals by attacking and occupying them for a certain amount of time. You can only seize capitals if you're in a faction. You can either capture them with an attack or a rally. Indeed. Once captured, you get a bonus to all faction members. The bonuses can be economy, infrastructure, offense and defense. Each capital region also has a renegade base. If defeated, the bonus of the capital in the region will be doubled for a certain time period. And these increased bonuses can be used strategically before main events such as the Seize the World HQ and the World Domination. As long as you defeat them just before the event starts, so you can get a better bonus for the event duration. And of course, you should focus on territories that give faction members offense or defense bonuses. Once the first city is captured, your faction can only occupy neighboring cities. Capitals can have levels from 1 to 5. How do you raise the level of the capital, by the way? The faction leader can raise the level of only one city by one level. To do that, they must set the provincial capital as their capital of the faction. The higher the level of the capital, the stronger the guardian army they have. And this means that your enemies will need a bigger army to capture it. But also would give higher percentage bonuses to the faction that controls them. Note that some capitals can have two bonuses at the same time. Important catch. Speaking of important things, let's move to the influence points. Before that, you mentioned provincial capital. What exactly are provinces? These are regions on the world map that have one capital city for every province. To make it part of your territory, you must be in a faction and occupy the city. Only one faction can control a province. But what does that bring you? Controlling a province will let you and your faction gather resources from elite deposits within it. The more provinces you control, the more bonuses you get. Can you attack it? Sure. Your faction can only attack a province that is adjacent to its own territory. The ones on islands can be attacked only if they have a link to other provinces. Good thing we explained that. Now, what were we talking about before? Influence points. Ah, yes. Each capital gives influence points. Level 1 gives 2, level 2 gives 4, and so on up to level 5. These influence points can be used for voting for realm policies and for events such as Seize the World HQ, where the world presidents are determined. Also, every faction will need at least 100 influence points before they can participate in the faction war season. The capitals also have different sizes measured in tiles. Each day, all faction members will get bonus basic resources based on their rank and the territory size. The higher the territory size, the more the oil, steel and ESCF cores they will receive. Each capital territory also has elite deposits. They can be used by up to 5 faction members at the same time to gather huge amounts of resources from them. All the levels, influence, size, bonuses and elite deposits can be viewed by selecting the info button in the radio menu. As mentioned, faction leaders can choose one city to make it the main capital. This will increase its level to plus one. For example, level one city will become level two, level five city will become level six, and so on. This makes the capital stronger. Also, enemy factions or players can no longer teleport on the main capital territory. There are also special cities marked by the harbor buff and an icon on the map. Once a city like this is occupied, anyone controlling it can attack any other harboring city on the map. These cities are very hard to capture and any attacks on them will always lead to destroyed units, even when successful. It's easy to assume that capturing such a strategic point will require the coordination of all faction members. Absolutely. Speaking of coordination, it is crucial to know that each city can also be reinforced by faction members. This can be used when defending them or during Renegade invasion events. But also, this can be wielded tactically by your faction members. How? For example, it can be used to hide part of your main army so you don't overflow your garage repair capacity, keeping your units safe. That's a great piece of advice. Before we go, 
generals. Do you see this sad emoji? This is sad Sam. He heard that a lot of you haven't subscribed to our channel. Use your power to turn him into Happy Hank by subscribing and hitting the notification bell. Thanks for the help, Tony. And thank you for staying until the end, generals. See you soon, WP Army.